Hello, I'm Pastor Hank, and I'm so happy to be able to spend a few minutes with you. I love to be able to share God's love and, and His goodness and His mercy. And, and uh, you know, God's got some good things for you. I'm sitting here, you know, we just had our annual roundup. We have, have one every year, the first day, Sunday in October. I, I know many of you were here, so, so you know what went on. But, but we had hundreds of lives that God was able to touch and, and do, do great things in their life. And so today, I, I just want to share a little bit of that service with you. And, and, and I'm believing God to touch you. So why don't you turn everything off, everything you're thinking about and all, and just sit for a few minutes and let God touch your heart and let him minister to you. And I'll be back in a few minutes and pray with you. How many has been preached at enough? You know, I don't, I don't really need any more body preaching at me. I just need to learn more about how God feels about me. I just need to learn more about his love. And, the, and the, the more I learn about his love and the more I learn about how he is, the closer I want to be with him. I mean, you know, I, I just want to lay down some of that stuff that was written there. I just want to, I just want to not, not pay attention to some of that stuff in the past. The more I feel God's love, the closer I get to him, the more I just, I just it's kind of like an addiction. Anybody here know what an addiction is? Huh? Whew. We get addicted to love, don't we, huh? Uh, well, there wasn't there a song like that in the old days, wasn't there, straight? I don't remember, but addicted to love. But, hey, I'm addicted to God's love. And I'll just, just talk with you just a couple minutes here, if that's okay. Because I think it's not an accident, like Greg said, it's not an accident that you're here today. You already know why you're here. Some of you already know you came today just to get right with the Lord again. Some of you here are Christians, and, and, uh, and you, you, know, you feel like you're pretty right. But, uh, you know, how many know that God always wants to draw us closer than we are? Yeah. So I don't want to leave anybody out, but, you know, there's some here today that, that you know, you've just, you've, you've, uh, you've, been, you've lived for God, but you just kind of got away a little bit. And there's some of you here that never really have made the decision to do it. And so I believe that's why you're here today. A lot of times in the service, I go ahead and give the invitation at the beginning. Huh? I just get the invitation at the beginning and get it over with because you enjoy the service a whole lot more if you're saved. But I just want to tell you, and, and you can smile. You can smile. Look at the person next to you and say, I know how to smile. Come on, come on, come on. Now, now if, you, if, you, if, you, if you make me work real hard, it'll take me longer to say what i got to say. But, you know, if I hear a, yeah, or a, amen, or a, yeah, that's it, or just you hear a little interaction here, it gets me going, and I go faster, see? Uh, oh, y'all are, y'all are precious. Y'all are precious. See a lot, of, uh, a lot of old friends today and hadn't seen in a while, and a lot of you, I hope, are going to be new friends. Uh, you know, because we need each other. We need each other. And more than anything, more than anything, we need Jesus. Uh, more than anything, we need Jesus. I, I, I couldn't help, when I was thinking about the love of God, I couldn't help but, but think about uh, Luke chapter 15. And, and I, I'm not going to read you a bunch of scripture today. Uh, you know, you got a Bible. How many got a Bible? You can read your Bible, okay? But I want to tell you about some of them. And, 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 and I just got to think about the, the, the 15th chapter of Luke. And, and it's, uh, I got a few notes here. But I can't see them without my glasses. So I guess I'll just, we'll, just have to, we'll just have to go for it. Huh? Um, I, I like this story, this chapter. It's got three parables in it. And, and you, you all have heard hundreds of stories about the three parables. You've got the lost coin, or the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. And I love the last story because it's the story of the, the prodigal, the, the, the young son that, that left home. And, and you know the story, the dad split the, all of his goods, all of his things up between the two, two sons. And one son left and he went out and, and he just had a party and he just squandered and he just lived, lived wild and wasteful. And, and after a while he ran out. And when he ran out, 
nobody, you know, he had friends while he was spending the money and while he was doing all the partying and stuff. But, but when he ran out, he didn't have any friends left. And he got hungry and he had to go work for a farmer that, that uh, had some pigs. And he was out feeding the pigs and he got so hungry. He got so hungry that, that he thought, man, I'll just eat this pig food. I'll just eat these this, this husk and, and, and all this pig food. And, uh, you know, he, he got to thinking there and he thought, you know, if I, could just, if I could just go home, if I could just be one of my dad's hired servants, they all got enough to eat. They're all, they're all taken care of. And, and so if I could just be one of his hired servants, if I could just, if I could just go back and, and, and I know what I'll do. And the Bible says he came to himself. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go back and I'll tell my father, I'm not worthy to be your son anymore. And I'm not asking you to be your son anymore. I'm just asking you if I could be a hired help, just a hired hand, because, because you take good care of your hired hands. And, and, and I'll just be happy in life if, if I can just be a hired hand. And, and we know the story. But what I like, the beauty of the story, you know, we all call that the story of the prodigal son or the lost son. But, but you know, I think that's the story of the loving father. The father that loved his son, that missed his son, that wanted his son back. And, 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 and I tell that, that story, that parable first because, because I, I think it's important that we get an image of God in our mind, how he really is, because see, you'd be surprised and I'd be surprised how many of you probably that are here today have this picture of God in our mind that, that, he's, that he's mean or that he's mad. We know he's love and we tell everybody he's love and I know he can love you, but I'm just not sure if he can love me. And, and we tell this story about how much God loves us and God so loved the world and, and, and all that. But you know, this, this story points out the Father's love. And, and, I, and I, guess, I guess there's religion has hidden. There's no, greater, there's no greater concept that's hidden from people, for even, even Christians, than the fact that God loves them. And you know, you'd be surprised how many Christians go through life and, 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 and they're afraid, they mess up and, and, and they go through and they, you know, anybody here ever make a mistake? Uh, anybody here ever make a mistake on purpose? I mean, how many here ever sinned by accident? Huh? Come on, get with me. How many sinned on purpose? Oh, got them all now, yeah. And you see, we all know ourselves, Paul. We all know ourselves better than anybody else. And so, so we can't imagine, because we don't even like ourselves, so we can't imagine how God could like us. And we know He paid a price. We know Jesus came, so, so I, can, I can confess Him and believe in Him and, and go to heaven. But you know what? You know, I, 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 need, I need a Father that loves me now. I need to sense some of that love now. I need, I need to know what's going on now. You know, when I get to heaven, how many here going to heaven? Okay, we'll get the rest of you in a minute. I won't get you. The Holy Ghost will get you. He's already working on us all. I tell you what, I was watching this music while ago, and I thought, you know, Lord, I think I'll just get saved again today. Huh, you're so good, I think I'll just get saved again. And so if any of y'all just want to get saved again today, that's okay. You can do it. I give you permission. But no greater concept of God has been hidden more than the fact that He loves us. And religion does that. Because religion tells you how bad you are. It tells you, it, religion tells you all the things you've got to do. And if you don't do them, how messed up you are. And, and, and you know, I don't know about any of you, but I don't really need anybody to tell me how messed up I am. I already know. I already know. What I need is a father like this father in the Bible here in the... Luke 15. This son came back and he had this, can you see him? He had this thing all rehearsed. He had this thing all ready to go. He had this big old long speech and he, he said, I'm going to go and I can see as he's coming up to the, to the house and he, it's way far off and, and he's come to, he said, I'm just going to tell him now, God, Dad, I'm, I'm not worthy. I, I'm not asking you to restore me there. I'm just asking you to hire me as a help. I'm, I'm just, you know, I can just see him kind of hunkering down and backing up. 
that's the way we do to God sometimes. Matter of fact, that's the way we do to God most of the time. Because, see, we know us better than anybody else. Huh? And, oh, God, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just not worthy. I, you know, God, I know, you, I know you want healing for me, and I know you want prospect, but I'm just not worthy enough. God, I know, I know you want me, God, and you want to do big things in my life, but, but, but you know, God, I'm just not worthy enough. And, and let me just tell you today, God loves you. He wants to do something in your life. He wants to do something big in your life. Matter of fact, some of you are getting healed right now. You've had some problems, and some of you, God's touching your body. You might not even notice it till after a while when you're out there eating chili. You might not even notice it till when you go home. Some of you are going to notice it in here, but, but God's touching you. Somebody came in here all depressed and all discouraged, and God, God's already started lifting that thing off of you. When, when He lifts that thing off of you, keep it off of you. Don't be grabbing it and trying to pull it back. Keep it off of you. Somebody listening to me, you've been thinking about ending it all. Well, that's sure a lie from hell. Huh? That's sure what the devil would like you to think. See, no, the, the, the devil and, and even religion doesn't want us to know that we got a father like this father and the son in, 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 the, in the Luke here, in the, in the story, in the parable. It, you know, I can see him as he's coming and, and he's thinking he's got this thing all rehearsed and, and he gets right up, gets right up smack dab where he can see the house. And boy, he said, oh, come on, man, the pressure's on now. I've got to say it just right because my dad won't accept me. I've got to say it just right. I've got to do it just right. I, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm just, you know. Can you imagine how he felt? But what I love about the story, old daddy's sitting on the porch. And daddy looks out there and he says, is that my son? Looks out there and, and he gets a little closer. He says, that's, that's, that's him. That's him. And here, here the son's feeling all guilty and all, all beat down and, and all defeated and all the rest of that stuff. And, and Father, he just sees, that's my son. And the Bible says he ran to him. He ran to him and hugged him and embraced him and kissed him. And the son started this little speech that he'd rehearsed. He said, well, but, but now, Dad, if I, I'm not worthy. And the, the dad just cut him off. The dad didn't even want to hear any of that. The dad said, you go get the best robe we've got and put it on him. Go get the ring and put it back on his finger. Go get the, kill the fattest calf out there, Denny. We're going to have a party. Oh, do you see? That's the way your heavenly father feels about you. That's the way he feels about you. He loves you. You know, he, he probably knew, he probably knew how bad you were going to be before you were. Huh? He, probably, he probably already had that figured out. And that's why the Bible says in Romans, it says, while we were sinners, he gave Jesus for us. Huh? Well, but he didn't wait for us to straighten out. How many ever, how many ever, somebody here, you said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my heart to the Lord, and I'm going to live for God, but, but I just need to straighten my life out first. It doesn't work that way. No, you come to him with all the mess. You come to him with all the mess, and he gets in there and helps you fix the mess. He says, I've just been waiting. Hank, I've just been waiting. I've just been waiting for you to come so I could help you fix that thing. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'm trying to do stuff on my own, and, 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 and it just gets messed up. And, and, and he just has to set me down, and he says, well, now, are, are, you, are you through? You know, have you, have, you, have you messed up everything enough? Are you through? Well, now let me work with you and let me put it back together. Oh, what a daddy we have. What a father we have. You know, there's three, there's three parables in this, in this thing. The first one's a lost sheep. And, 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 and the second one's a lost coin. And the third one's the lost son. And, and, I, and I couldn't, I, I just thought of a couple things. But, you know, the lost sheep, God, 
It's a, he, 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 Jesus is trying to give us a picture of daddy here. You know, now, now, I don't mean to be disrespectful for some, some that are religious minded, but, but you know, I don't come before God and go, oh, thou most holy, holy heaven. I, I mean, I don't come before him, thou art the God of the universe and thou shalt. I, I don't come before him and talk in King James, okay? No, I have a relationship with him. I come before him. He's daddy. He's daddy. Isn't that what Paul said? Paul said, said he'll put a spirit within you that cries out, Abba, Father. He'll put something in you that makes you long for him and, 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 and that brings that closeness in there. You know, if you were to be around a, a, a play yard uh, where kids were playing in, in Israel, you'd hear, you'd hear a, 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 a little kid when, they're, when, they're, when their daddy came, you'd hear him cry out, Abba, Abba. It means daddy, daddy. And so if it's okay with you just for today, put up with me because, man, he's my daddy. Uh, he's my daddy. Uh, he, he's, he's my heavenly father. But he's daddy. And, 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 and I, couldn't help, I couldn't help but think about the lost sheep. The lost sheep. The lost sheep really didn't do anything to get lost. Jesus used that story because, you know, sheep, anybody been around sheep very much? You know, really, really it wasn't a compliment when Jesus called us sheep. <laughs> But, but, but I thought about the sheep drifting off. And the sheep really didn't do anything intentionally. He just drifted off. He just kind of wasn't paying attention. And he just kind of drifted off. You know, kind of like some of us sometimes. We don't intend to get away from God. We don't intend to it. I mean, our mind keeps telling us we're right with God and it's okay and I don't have to go to church and I don't have to do anything and I don't have to and I don't have to and I don't, you know. But, 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 but what's happening is, is, is uh, and, and let me just say this, you don't have to do anything to earn this love I'm talking about. It's free. It's free. But see, sometimes we just drift off. We just drift away a little bit. We just, you know, uh, anybody in here besides me ever just drift away a little bit? Four of us? Okay. Any? Okay. <laughs> you know how the best way to, to decide if you've drifted, to, to, to determine if you've drifted, was there ever a time that you were more on fire for God than you are now? What was was there ever a time? Now, 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 don't don't tell me. You don't have to nod or anything. I'm not. But 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 was there ever a time, whenever you just couldn't wait to tell somebody about the Lord, and that fire was just burning in you that we talked, sang about a while ago, and that presence was just in there, and they, and and man, they couldn't, man, when it was church time, you, you, they couldn't keep you away from church, and 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 if that church was closed, you were gonna go to one that was open, and and I mean, man, you just you just were. In, is was there ever a time that you were more passionate about God than you are now? <clears throat> See, the sheep didn't. Didn't just leave God on purpose, he just drifted away. Just drifted away. We get so busy looking at our problems and looking at the things in our life and looking at all our crises and all of our situations that we, that we just kind of, we don't intend to, we just get our eyes off God. And we end up out there and the enemy's just having a field day and we're going things like, God, why are you letting this happen to me? God, why am I going through this? God, I can't believe that this happened. It happened. It happened because we got a devil and he's trying to get us away from God. Here's the beauty of that parable though. The father or the shepherd he left all, he left all his sheep. He left all the 99 and went after the one. I want you to feel the compassion, the love, the, 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 the feeling of the shepherd here. And, and Jesus is trying to say, this is, how, this, is how your, this is how your heavenly daddy is. This is how he is. You see, John 3, 16, and we quote it. And we tell it to people. 
We say, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. How many glad he gave Jesus? How many glad Jesus came? Yes, thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you're wonderful. And, 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 and if you'll just believe in him, you won't have to perish, but you'll have eternal life. And if we're not careful, though, listen real quick. If we're not careful, we get lost in the crowd. Because we know God will save everybody. But can I tell you something this morning? He's coming after you. Uh, he wants you. Can you see me in the back? He wants you. He wants you. You see, he, he's willing to lay everything else down and come back to you. Get you because he wants you back because that's how important you are to him. Yeah, it'd be a good time to give him some praise. The next parable, the next parable was the, was the parable of the lost coin. This one... You know, she didn't, the, the sheep just kind of drifted away. He just kind of got to looking at the cares of the world and kind of got to looking at all this stuff that was going on around him. And pretty soon he found out and he, when, he, when he realized that he was away from God. But this, this lost coin, it didn't really do anything on purpose. It didn't do anything to get lost. I couldn't help but think that some, some here, Someone here, you, you, you're, you're not living close to God because somebody's hurt you. It wasn't anything you did. Somebody did something to you. You, you, went, through, you went through something that, that just shook you and, 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 and it was unexpected. And, 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 and you know, maybe, maybe, those, maybe those church folk, they, 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 uh, they got on you or somehow you've been hurt. Somehow, somehow something's happened to you that's pulled you away. The Bible says, the Bible says that she was frantically looking for it. That's the way the Heavenly Father is. She was, she was frantically looking for that coin. Now, it doesn't really mean a lot unless you understand that, that that coin was one of ten coins. And I don't have time to go into it real deep, but, but it was a very valuable coin. And, and, and what happened when, when you would get married in Bible days, and some customs still do it, they, they, would, they would hand you, people would come up, and, and while, while you were at the, while you were, the lady and the husband were there, the lady would cup her hands. And of course, people brought these things, but, but, the, but the, the, the husband, the husband-to-be, he would drop these ten coins in the lady's hands. And these were very valuable coins. And, and, and they had little hooks on them, and sometimes they'd wear them in their hair, but most of the time they'd make a little garland thing out of them, and they'd have ten coins on it, and they would wear it on their head. That was the, that was the emblem, that was to signify that they were married. That was like the wedding ring, except it meant much more. And, and if, you, if, you, if you lost one of those coins, if you lost one, then that broke the marriage covenant. And it made the husband, it made the husband think that you didn't, you weren't affectionate for him anymore and that you didn't, that you didn't respect him anymore. So you see why the lady, she's looking at it so, so hard. She's going after it so much. She's, she just, she's got to find that coin. And, and, and see, that's, that's the way, that's the desperate, that's how desperate God is to get you back. And, and the thing that came to my mind is that coin was valuable. The biggest lie the devil will tell you is that you're just a nothing. That's okay. Babies are crying. They don't hurt us. Listen to me. I'm telling you something important, okay? Oh, we got hell nervous today because some of you have already started making up your mind. Huh? Some, some of you already, God's already touching you. And if I'd hurry up and get done, you'd make a decision for the Lord, wouldn't you? Huh? But I couldn't help but think of the value of this coin. The biggest lie the devil will ever tell you is that, you don't, that you're not worth anything, that you don't amount to anything, that you're not important. That, 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 but listen, I'm telling you something. God, you're valuable to God, and He's coming after you like your that lost coin. He needs you. You're part of the picture. See, see, the body won't be the same if you're not part of it. It won't be complete if you're not part of it. 
Everyone listening to me, you're important to God. You're valuable to God. And He's coming after you like you're the most valuable one in the kingdom. Mm. (laughs) Man. Oh, that is a good word, and that's the truth. That's the gospel. That's the good news. The son, he was lost. He made a choice. He is lost on his own. He, he did it on purpose. He just decided, I had not got time to live for Father now. I haven't got time. i got to go out and do my thing. And there's somebody listening to me today. You've been that way. You just, well, I, I'm going I'm gonna, when, when, to make a decision when it's a more convenient time. I, I got some things I got to do first. I got some, some living I got to do first. I got some things I got to do first. And, and you know, I'm going to make, you, you, listen, listen, the end of the story for you, if you don't get Jesus in your heart today, the end of the story for you is you be wallering with the pigs. You be eating pig food. Huh? Okay, it reminds me of King Agrippa. Uh, Paul goes before him and he's talking to him and I think it's Acts 26 and, and he's going to him and he's giving him his testimony and he's telling him about Jesus died for you and telling him how great Jesus is and what he's done for mankind and, and, and Agrippa makes a statement he says almost Paul almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian almost somebody here is almost But this is your day. This is your day. Before that, Felix Felix, uh, was with him a couple chapters before that. And and, and Felix said, uh, okay, Paul. Paul gives him the story and tells him the thing and and tells him about Jesus. He says, okay, okay, Paul. When it's a more convenient season, when it's a more convenient time, I'll do it. Listen, the beauty of the story and the beauty of this book and the beauty of what Jesus did is it really doesn't matter for what reason you're lost. Huh? It doesn't matter if you just kind of drifted away, just got a little bit cold. You know, Jesus said one time, he said to, he said to one of the churches in Revelations, he said to one of the churches, and he was saying it to Christians, he said, you're, you're not either hot or you're not cold. You're just lukewarm. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth doesn't matter why you're away from God it really doesn't make any difference why but it's terrible to be lost you see I I think that's why we had this day today so so you could come back wow what a time we had with the Lord Uh, you know we had a lot of folks that that had never never known Jesus had never been saved a lot of the a lot of folks asked her ask him into their heart we had some that maybe hadn't known him, and they'd kind of drifted a little away. How I many know that happens to us sometimes? We just, we just drift a little bit, and they were able to rededicate and, and give, their, give their life back to God. And I don't want to leave today without giving you that opportunity. Maybe you weren't able to be here, uh, but you might mark it on your calendar for, for this next year because we'll have one again. But maybe, maybe you don't know that you're saved. Maybe you don't know right now that if you died, you'd go be with God forever if you don't know that for sure I, I just want to pray for you right now and maybe you maybe you're just away but it wouldn't hurt for you just to pray this prayer with me again and just get your life back on track get your life back with God he wants to do some big things in your life and he's going to if you'll give him a chance right where you are bow your head pray this with me and say it out loud say it with your mouth don't just think it father I want to be saved Jesus You died for my sins, and I'm asking you to forgive me right now. I give you my life. I want to live for you. I thank you for saving me. I need your help, Lord, and I know you'll give it to me. So I pray this prayer in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that, hey, we want to help you get going. We want to send you some stuff. There's a number. Just call call us. Give us a a call. we want to send you some information. It, it'll help you get on your way with the Lord. It'll help you get into the Bible. It'll help you start this relationship. And that's what it's all about. It's a relationship with Him. Hey, I appreciate you spending the time to be with us today. And until next time, I just want you to know, hey, I love you. And more important than that, God loves you.